Hi, I'm Tim. Please join me in this video as we discuss why standard remote ID, which is required by the FAA to be built into the drones and factories, why that is not required for almost ready to fly RC model aircraft. Let's get to it. Thank you for joining me. My name is Tim. In this video, we're going to talk about something that I think is kind of interesting that I've been wondering about, and that's remote ID. So remote ID, the final rule has been published in the, in the um, Federal Register. It is a regulation. I'll go into detail when it starts here in a moment, the remote ID. I'll go into some differences that are important to understand between standard remote ID built in the factory and broadcast remote ID, which is a module and how that might affect you as an RC pilot. Then we'll hear some interesting discussion from an engineer uh, at Spectrum on why remote ID is required to be built in the factory for drones, yet there's not a ARF, an almost ready to fly model that I'm aware of that has remote ID as part of the uh, sale of that model. You're required to buy a module. So as always, uh, thank you for likes and subscribes. They help the channel tremendously. Also, if you want to jump ahead to various sections, there is a timeline down below. Just hover the timeline. You can go to that chapter. So a very short recap of Remote ID. Remote ID became real in the 2018 FAA Authorization Act. It gave money and congressional di uh, direction to the FAA to do something about tracking unmanned aircraft in the national airspace system to include the identification of the drone and where the pilot is located. A bunch of comments back and forth, proposed rules, the final rule was published. The original implementation date of remote ID was September 16th, 2023, due to the inability for anybody to get a remote ID broadcast module. The compliance date has been slipped to March 16th, 2024. The rule's still on the books, but it will be discretionary enforcement by the FAA. Basically, nobody has to worry too much about complying with remote ID until March 16th, 2024. This is being filmed in um, October of 2023. So remote ID, just a quick summary, is after March 16th, 2024, everybody flying an unmanned aircraft in the national airspace system needs to be flying with remote ID. There are two types of remote ID, standard remote ID that is built into the RC airplane, it's a drone for now at the factory, or a broadcast remote ID module, which you could purchase separately and add to your drone. There are two exceptions for recreational flyers where you do not need remote ID. As a recreational pilot, you do not need remote ID if your model weighs less than 250 grams or you're flying your recreational model in a FRIA or an FAA recognized identification area. This is an area set aside by the FAA, typically for AMA club fields or educational institutions where you can fly your RC model within visual sight without the need of any remote ID equipment whatsoever. So what is the difference between standard remote ID and broadcast remote ID in a module? So going back when the FAA was writing the rules for remote ID, it was pretty clear that the FAA was new to drones and how they were manufactured. The FAA historically is very used to dealing with aircraft manufacturers as kind of a touch point for a certification and requirements for the aircraft. It was made clear to the FAA that a number of aircraft are built by manufacturers, <laughs> specifically drones. However, there's a wide range of RC model aircraft that are produced as kits, as almost ready to fly, or even in my case, where I simply create a foam board model in my home workshop. And it's very hard to have strict instructions to comply with a remote ID built to FAA specifications for somebody like me that builds in a workshop. That led to the outgrowth of the concept of a remote ID broadcast module. Now, both the standard ID and remote ID have to meet FAA means of compliance to technically qualify as remote ID, but there are some differences in what they can do that's important for the modeler to know. So first of all, for the standard remote ID that is built into the drone at the factory, that was an FAA rule or requirement since December 22nd, 2022. So this is being filmed in October 2023 for the past 10 months and longer. 
there have been tens of thousands of drones produced and sold in the United States that have remote ID built in because it had to be done by December 22nd, 2022. What this means is over a period of time, as the drones age out, there will be an increasingly higher proportion of drones bought with the standard remote ID built in that will be remote ID compliant, whether the, uh, the operator knows it or not. For the broadcast remote ID, you have to buy a separate broadcast remote ID module. Uh, I have purchased my Sky ID from Spectrum. I ordered it August 25th and it has not been delivered yet. We're in late October right now. The um, flight test folks have an easy ID module. Others are coming out onto the market. The idea is you plug in the remote ID module, you have a signal and you're remote ID compliant if you're flying outside of a Freya with a model that weighs 250 grams or more. So both the standard and remote and broadcast remote ID meet the requirements of remote ID, but there are differences in the performance of a standard remote ID and a broadcast remote ID. For the standard remote ID built in the factory, everything comes ready to go once you purchase a drone. As a matter of fact, some drone companies actually did a firmware update to make an older drone compliant with remote ID with a firmware update. The remote ID is integrated more into the drone. There are some cases of drones with standard remote ID. It may not operate if it can't get a proper lock on the GPS signal. With the broadcast remote ID, it's not quite as integrated as with standard. And so what will happen is with the broadcast remote ID, you're not allowed to do a beyond visual line of sight operations. And you're just not allowed to do it. And there are limitations to operations over people with broadcast ID that don't exist with the standard ID. So there are some similarities and differences over what the standard and broadcast remote ID transmit to, um, to, to somebody receiving the signal. Now, what is common with both the standard and broadcast remote ID is the drone identification, location, the altitude, the velocity, and a time mark. However, there are some, uh, there's, there's two important differences between standard and broadcast or remote ID. With a standard ID, it gives the control station location. With a broadcast module, it gives the um, takeoff location. What happens with standard remote ID, there's a dynamic updating between the drone and your, um, the location of the pilot. That's why it calls it the control station location. For example, with a standard drone, if you're flying on one side of a football field and you walk over to the other side of the football field while you're doing your drone flight, that dynamic upgrading, the um, updating, the control station location, you moving to the other side of the football field is updated if somebody is trying to determine that drone's pilot location. With the remote ID broadcast module, it's just the takeoff location. It does not dynamically update. If in this previous case, you relocate to the other side of the football field, the broadcast remote ID doesn't know that. It just is not capable of doing that. The other slight difference is the drone ID. For a standard ID built into the factory, you could have a session ID or the uh, drone identification for the broadcast, it is the module ID that identifies it. The FAA is still working on exactly how they're going to handle the session ID. That's not finalized yet. That is another difference between the um, standard remote ID and the broadcast uh, remote ID. And again, to summarize, remote ID will be the law of the land after March 16th, 2024. Everybody flying a recreational drone, 250 grams or over, outside of a FRIA will need remote ID. Remote ID is a standalone ruling from the FAA. It has nothing to do with whether you're flying in controlled airspace or uncontrolled airspace. It is just a remote ID requirement. Getting back to the title of the video, why is it that the FAA requires that all drones being manufactured must have standard remote ID built in at the factory for sale in the U.S.? after December 22nd, 2022, but there's no such requirement for the large number of ARFs, also ready to fly RC models out there. None of them that I'm aware of comes with a remote ID capability. So back in the summertime, there was an interesting discussion on one of the chat 
groups of a engineer at Spectrum who was developing the Sky ID system. And he gave some background from his con company experience and with other distributors about why this is so. So I'm going to read from him. So the question has come up, well, why don't you just build remote ID into the receiver? That way, every time you get a receiver, you get remote ID. It seems like it would kill two birds with one stone. The engineer replied, unfortunately, remote ID cannot be built into the receiver or included in models for free. The components hardware is required to make this work cost as much or even more than those required to manufacture a typical six channel receiver with stabilization. This is about the August uh, 2023 timeframe. And so the reason Spectrum is offering it is because the FAA is requiring it. They want to offer a solution to people that need and um, want to comply. And of course, whether or not you comply with the remote ID is completely up to yourself. I will be complying with the remote ID. Also, remote ID is not required to be included in any of the models we sell unless those models weigh 250 grams or more, and, and this is the important point, are full ready to fly, which means they include everything needed to fly that model in one box, including a transmitter, a battery, and a charger, which is very common with drones. It is very common to buy an RF without a receiver, without a transmitter, without a battery, without a charger. You can put those in on your own. So the engineer continues, we stopped having any such, quote, full ready-to-fly models manufactured in the middle of last year. Otherwise, it'd have to increase the remote ID with that model and the price would go up $100 or more. So what the manufacturers do is they offer a ready-to-fly basic. It might include a transmitter, no battery, no receiver, and so forth. But they, because they are not everything needed to fly, they do not, per the FAA, require a remote ID. These are various terms, bind to fly, basic, plug and play, almost ready to fly. The bottom line is if not everything is there, they are not required to be sold with remote ID. So the only way to be remote ID compliant with models like this is to buy the standalone module like the Sky ID if you're flying outside of a FRIA to be remote ID compliant after March 16th, 2024. Remember also that if you're flying part 107, each one of your part 107 aircraft will need its own remote ID module. That's, that's a lot of modules. If you're flying recreation, recreationally, however, the good news is you just need to buy one module and swap it out between your aircraft. Uh, some people have said that this is a burden. I agree it's kind of a pain in the neck to do that, but we are used to swapping out batteries between flights with um, extensions to your receiver and uh, the remote ID module hatches, it should not be too much of an issue to swap the remote ID broadcast module between models as you fly, if you're flying outside of a FRIA. Remember, if you're in an FAA recognized identification area, which should be the majority of AMA clubs out there, you do not need any remote ID equipment whatsoever to fly um, once you're flying in a FRIA. That completes my discussion of why you don't uh, have remote ID coming from the factory for your almost ready to fly models. It's just a way to save money. I believe remote ID is going to be pretty much a non-event. It's just another piece of equipment. This time we're required to buy it instead of choosing to buy it like with a gyro or something of that nature. Just go ahead. If you're flying in a Freya, nothing has changed outside of a Freya. You need the remote ID module. Prices will come down over time, I am sure, on the remote ID modules. I can see the day sometime, somewhere, where that remote ID capability will be, be built into a receiver and then it just becomes a normal part of our flight operations. Remote ID is foundational to fully integrated operations in the national airspace system between manned and unmanned aircraft. There will be further developments on this, name changes and so forth, but the concept is going to be with us because there's so many drones flying, uh, sharing the airspace, in many cases, with manned aircraft. Thank you for tuning in, and we look forward to seeing you on future videos.